Hello, today we will deal with immune system pathology and this is a mind map which is covering pretty much everything you have to know about the immune system pathology. If you turn now to the branches, we have six of them and today we will deal with immunodeficiency. So what is immunodeficiency? We can define it as a quantitative or qualitative defect of the lymphocytes like T and B lymphocytes or the natural defense mechanism like phagocytic cells or the complement system and the quantitative standing for that we have a reduced number of these cells or the quality meaning that the quality of these cells are bad and these patients will then typically have a susceptibility to infection and lymphoproliferative diseases. So what are the types of immunodeficiency? They are primary and secondary type. What's the difference between these? The secondary is an acquired deficiency, whereas the primary is a genetic deficiency. The primary having an early onset. So there you have babies between six months and two years having a recurrent infections. The acquired one are, for example, one example is an acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, as you know it, AIDS, and it's caused by other things. So the primary one, we can classify it as B cell, T cell, and some other diseases. Our topic today will be handling D. George syndrome, which is a T cell deficiency. So let's dig in. This is everything you have to know about D. George syndrome. You have a couple of pictures, you have some uh, branches, and let's turn now to the baby, which have a thymic hypoplasia, the thymus which usually is there for having the T-cell to mature into normal, competent T-cell, which can defend you against infections. And in this baby, this will not be functioning well because the baby have a pharyngeal pouch developmental failure. What does this mean? You can look at this embryo. Here we have the embryo. You see the pharyngeal arches here. If you cut the embryo into half, then you have this picture representing the embryo with these pharyngeal arches. These are the pharyngeal arches. And the pharyngeal pouches are the yellow one here protruding inside, which can give rise to many different things in your body. And you see, as you see, your pharyngeal pouch, one, two, three, four, they give rise to different things like tympanic middle ear cavity, auditory or station tube, the second one, palatine tonsil, and so on. Today, we are concerned with the third one and the fourth one. The third one, as you see, gives right to the thymus. And the thymus is important for the T cell maturation. So the third one gives rise to the thymus. In our case, it doesn't. So we don't have a primary T cell, we don't have a T cell uh, defense. So we have a primary T cell deficiency. It's interrupted at the pre-T cell stage. You will understand it when I sh show you the picture here. So you have an absent cell-mediated immunity. So you have a bad defense against infections like viral, fungal, protozoal infections, bacterial. The third one also gives rise to something called parathyroid gland. Fourth one also to something called parathyroid gland. The third one giving rise to the inferior part of it. The fourth one giving rise to the superior part of it. So. If you don't have a parathyroid gland, then you, will don't, then you don't secrete any calcium. That's the function of it. So you have a hypocalcemia, less, blood in the, less calcium in the blood. And then you get tetany. Tetany is a contraction of all the muscles in your body, which is very, very dangerous, it's fatal. So let's turn now to the pre-T cell stage. I have to uh, explain what I meant. So in the bone marrow, you will have a pluripotent stem cell here, which gives rise to many different kinds of cells, myeloid stem cells and so on, which is another story, and the common lymphoid progenitor cells. This gives rise to the B cells and the T cells in the bone marrow, but we have to have them to mature into mature ones. As you see, we need the mature T cells. And that can happen through the thymus. So this common lymphoid progenitor cells with the pro T cells in the blood will enter the thymus. In the thymus, it will mature into uh, an immature T cell first and then into mature one here. And you see D. George syndrome can block at this stage. So we don't have any mature T cells and that's how, how it happened. And then you do have this 
bad defense against the infections. The fourth one also I mentioned here is giving rise to something called ultimo branchial body. Parafrico C cells is, of the thyroid is formed and these cells are usually there because they secrete calcitonin. Calcitonin is there to decrease the calcium in the blood. In our case it will be the total opposite. We don't have these cells, we don't have calcitonin, so we have an increased number of calcium instead. So now you wonder, here you said that we have a decreased calcium due to the parathyroid gland is not functioning as it should. And here you say now we have increased calcium. Yeah, the net effect, the net effect will be that we will have a hypocalcemia and tetanus because this is stronger than that one. Let's turn now to, and this, this is how it looks like, uh, in fact, the tetany. So you see we have a contraction of all the muscles, biceps, all the extensor muscles, the back muscles of the body, the face, everything is contracting. The morphology of D. George syndrome is the following. We will have the lymphoid organs as lymph node and spleen, and these have, these have zones where you usually have T cells, many T cells. And the zone here is represented as a purple color next to the artery of the spleen. And this will be depleted because we stopped the maturation, because we didn't have the pharyngeal pouch, we didn't have the thymus, we, we don't have any T cells in this baby. So this morphology will have a depleted zone here and in the lymph node it will be in the paracortex because usually the T lymphocytes are here in the paracortex and that you can read it here in the spleen in the periarterial sheet which was the purple color here next to the artery and in the lymph node the paracortical areas 90% 90, 90 of the patients will have something called chromosome 22q11 2 deletion syndrome and this is meaning that in the 22nd chromosome of all the chromosomes which you have in the body, this is the karyotype of those, there in the 22nd chromosome you will have a short arm and then a central part centromere and then you have a long arm. In the long arm will be the abbreviated as a Q, the short arm abbreviated as a P and this chromosome 22 will have in the long arm of Q it will have a region 1 of the chromosome, band 1 of the region 1, and subband 2 of the band 1. And then you will get this 22 chromosome, Q, long arm, region 1, band 1, subband 2, deletion syndrome. So you delete that part of the chromosome, and then you will get this syndrome of D. Georgia. And you, will, you can memorize it with a mnemonic, CATCH-22 syndrome. You see C-A-T-C-H-22, CATCH-22, where you have cardiac effect, abnormal mouth, ears and face, thymic hypoplasia, cleft palate, you can see the baby having cleft palate, hypocalcemia, why did we have hypocalcemia? You remember, because we didn't have the third, pharyngeal, third and fourth pharyngeal pouch. We don't have the parathyroid gland, which usually secrete calcium, so we have hypocalcemia, giving rise to tetany, contraction of the muscles. And then the 22, meaning the 22nd chromosome. That's it. And some patients will, will not be immunodeficiency, actually. They only have a conotronchal defect, problem with the heart and great vessels. So here is the heart, and this is how it looks like in the beginning, and then it's folding into the heart shape and during this folding you can have a defect and therefore you will have a conotruncal defect in some patients in some babies so this is how it looks like you have a cleft a fissure between the mouth and the nose so the treatment there are patients with don't who don't need a treatment those who only had this uh, partial syndrome because they have a small part of thymus still present and they will recover with time with their treatment and there are those who need uh, transplants, thymic tissue. So let's summarize this now. D. Georgia syndrome is what? 
thymic hypoplasia, meaning we had a pharyngeal pouch developmental failure. Which ones? Third and the fourth. Third one giving rise to the thymus, so if we don't have the thymus then uh, we, s we don't have this maturation here, so it stops at the pre T cell stage. It will have an abscess cell mediated immunity, and then you cannot, then you don't defend yourself against these viral, fungal, protozoan, and bacterial infections. The third one also giving rise to parathyroid, you get the hypocalcemia, and then you get tetany, contraction of the muscles. You can treat the patient with uh, transplanting the thymic tissue, or you don't have to treat it, it will recover with time without any problem with partial syndrome. And this morphology, which we discussed before in the lymph node and spleen, there in the lymph node you had the paracortical areas being depleted of the T-cell T cells, and the spleen also in the periarterial sheet, this purple one, being depleted of T lymphocytes. And 95% of the patient will have a chromosome 22Q11-2 deletion syndrome. Remember the CATS22 syndrome with the cleft palate, and then in the patients of the baby you will have this conotruncal congenital defect. We know that the D. George syndrome is a primary deficiency classified as a T cell deficiency having these characteristics and immunodeficiency as we stated was quantitative or qualitative defect. Quantitative in our case here as you remember we had less of the T cells and therefore the infection is a high probability to have because we have we uh, we don't have these T lymphocytes which would otherwise defend us and the big picture is that this was one branch of the total immune system 